So today we're going to be doing a lecture on solutions, um, and that includes concentrations as also solubility. Right? So the first thing that we're going to be doing is uh, molarity. Right? So what is molarity? And molarity is defined by this big M, and we'll see that that's different from the little m, which is molality. Right? So molarity is the moles of solute over the liters of solution. Right? And keep track of this solution right there. Right? Uh, versus molality, which is little m. And that is um, the moles of solute, and this is solute up here too, over kilograms of solvent. Okay? Um, so that's different from solution uh, because solvent and solute will equal the sol uh, solution. Okay? Um, so solution is bigger than the solvent, not by much, but still by some. Okay? Um, then mole fraction. And we'll say, what is the mole fraction of x? Okay? So that is the number of moles of x over the total number of moles. Okay? Um, so now that we have these concentrations down, um, these are something that we just have to memorize. Uh, but they'll be very, very useful, especially when we deal with a lot of uh, equations with um, solubility in the future. All right, so now we're going to be looking at the solubility rules. Um, and so I just have four down here. There's a lot more than just these. Um, but for the MCAT's purpose, this is all we will really need to know. All right? So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is group one, which will be stuff like uh, lithium, potassium, sodium, um, and also NH4 plus are going to be soluble. All right? um, nitrate, acetate, um, and also the chlorate um, ions are also going to be soluble. Um, silver, lead, um, and mercury are going to be insoluble. And the halogens are going to be soluble. Uh, but you see, I, I put these in a specific order. So I put one, two, three, and four. Um, so whichever one comes first, we follow that rule. For example, what if we have AgCl? Well, since the third rule comes before the fourth, we know that AgCl is going to be insoluble. So Ag and Cl, we have Ag being um, in rule number three, which is insoluble, and Cl being in the halogens, um, and it's going to be soluble, but rule three uh, overrides rule four. So this is going to be insoluble. All right, so just keep track of that. Um, it'll be pretty important later on. All right, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is the Van Hoff factor, which is denoted by that little i. Um, and it's the number of particles that uh, a molecule dis dissociates to in water, specifically water. All right. So, for example, we have NaCl. Um, its bound half factor is going to be 2 because NaCl di dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus. If we have glucose, which is C6H12O6, um, its Van Hoff factor is going to be 1. And 1 doesn't mean that it's insoluble, which some people are uh, mistaken for, because C6H12O6 glucose, we can think of it just like sugar, sugar water. Okay? Sugar dissolves in water, but it doesn't dissociate into uh, different particles. It doesn't dissociate into maybe like CO2 and H2O and H plus, H2. Um, it's just simply glucose. It, it, disso it dissolves in water, but it doesn't dissociate into smaller particles. That's why I equals 1. But if you have, for example, HgCl2, remember Hg is insoluble, our I is going to be 0. Okay, So I equals 0 means insoluble. And so we have to keep these two straight. I equals 1 versus I equals 0. I equals 1 simply means it dissolves, uh, but it doesn't dissociate into smaller particles. I equals 0 means that it strictly is insoluble. It doesn't dissolve in water. So we'll have two different parts that are separate from each other. This HgCl2 and also water. And that's why it's important to remember that it's in water because HgCl2 could dissolve into um, could dissolve in other solvents, but it doesn't so in water. Okay, so the final thing we're going to be looking at are the solubility rules um, in terms of liquid and gas. So what will the temperature and pressure affect liquid and gas solubilities? Okay, um, so if we increase the temperature, what will that affect the solubilities of a liquid? Okay, that will increase solubility for a liquid. But if you look at for a gas, it will actually decrease the solubility of a gas. Okay. So if we increase the temperature um, of a mixture of gas particles, they will tend to separate from each other if we keep increasing the temperature. For example, if we had H2 and we had N2 in the container, um, 
and these for some reason are soluble with one another um, and then we increase the temperature slowly they'll become insoluble and they will separate from each other that's just an example um, it may not be the exact case but we just need to know that increasing temperature um, will decrease the solubility of gas and increase the solubility of liquids right um, and so now for pressure, what does that do? First, so for pressure, uh, liquid solubility doesn't really do anything. There, if you think about it, what, what would um, increasing the pressure do on liquid solubility? But for gases though, what would that do? That would increase the solubility. Um, so if you imagine uh, putting down a lot of pressure, like in a pressure cooker, it will make the solubilities of these gases much more soluble. Right? So just keep track of all these solubility rules. It's a little bit to memorize, uh, but it's not too bad.